Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Halloween. Ron Harris here, MD Online Editor. You should tell, you should be able to know by the title of this video, we're not talking about bodybuilding today. Um, that should be apparent. If it's not, we're not going to talk about Big Rami or the Olympia or uh, anything like that right now. It's scary movies. What's your favorite scary movie? I want to hear what you guys have to say. I want to know what movies really scared the crap out of you. I'll start. I think everyone knows my favorite scary movie of all time was The Exorcist, directed by William Friedkin, screenplay by William Peter Blatty, based on the novel by William Peter Blatty. It tells a tale of a young girl, the daughter of a famous actress, who is possessed by a demon, Pazuzu, and uh, priest, a priest is called in to assist, to exorcise this demon. And uh, you guys know the plot. This movie, it's, uh, in my opinion, the best horror movie ever made. Let me see if I can get this up on my screen while we're talking, guys. Yeah, so I want to hear your because I want to hear I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, it's the only movie that really ever really deeply scared me, scarred me in a way. So I saw this movie when I was I want to say twelve years old. It was the last day of school, I think, in uh, sixth grade, and the movie was out in re-release, and I convinced my dad had to my late father and uh man I, it. I regretted it because uh i was cowering behind him half the movie uh i i watched it but i was peeking out behind it was the visuals the sounds everything was just terrifying the whole concept to me was just terrifying that uh this uh personification of evil this this invisible force with intelligence of its own and and superpowers basically paranormal power hours uh could inhabit a human being at will uh and so i immediately i'm like 11 or 12 years old at this time i thought that was going to happen to me i was terrified it was going to happen to me uh so i spent that entire summer sleeping downstairs on the couch in the in the living room um mostly sleeping in the day uh, at nighttime i was too afraid to sleep i'd be up cowering i wouldn't go up to my room and sleep in my room because the way my house was laid out, um, my bedroom was sort of uh, around a corner at the end of a hall. The, the little girl Reagan's room was in the movie The Exorcist. So I was just terrified. And a um, uh, true story that people think is ridiculous, but it actually was a big part of why I chose Christianity as my religion. So I had, uh, my father was a wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, uh, went to a Congregationalist church, first Congregational church where I grew up in Waltham. And my mother, though she wasn't practiced, she was Jewish, my lay mother. So I remember, you know, both, my parents weren't really battling over it at all, but I remember like uh, my grandmothers, one grandmother wanted me to go to church, the other one wanted me to go to temple. Temple never appealed to me for one thing because it was on a Saturday. And this is back before Cartoon Network and YouTube. So all the good cartoons were on Saturday morning. I didn't want to miss all the good cartoons. Sunday morning is when crappy stuff was on, like uh, Three Stooges, Top Cat, Gilligan's Island. So I'm like, yeah, I could go then. But this movie really clinched it for me. I felt like I needed protection. The Exorcist was so scary to me that I felt I needed protection from that evil. It was this palpable force. I could feel evil around me. I was so paranoid. Uh, I saw, I saw like the devil in every dark corner, uh, every little noise, every, every noise made a little ping or a knock or the wind blew. I was like, <laughs> so, you know, that, that was the movie that, that did it for me. And I, to this day, I believe that is the scariest movie that's ever been made. Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah, guys, I want to hear your, the movies that scared you because I know the extra scared a lot of people, but there's been plenty of other scary movies since then that have done that. Um. For some people, it's slasher movies. Slasher movies to me never uh they were not they were not scary. They were exciting to me to watch because you know I was a little gore hound. I used to get Fangoria magazine. If any of you know know what that was, it was a monthly magazine that covered the horror movie scene with particular attention to the special makeup effects. Um, and I was just obsessed with uh, you know, gore and the way they could make people look like monsters or, or age them or make wounds or, you know, mortal wounds look realistic. It was, to me, that was just fascinating. Guys like Tom Savini, Rick Baker, 
they were my heroes at that time. But uh, um, the Exorcist, I, I think, works still works today, is because you have this this sense of dread, impending doom, that starts from the very beginning of the movie, uh, when the you see the frame uh, where it says the title of the movie, and you're hearing what really shouldn't be a frightening thing when you now that I know what it is, it's the uh, it's the Muslim call to worship because the movie starts off in Iraq. It was actually, the opening sequence was filmed in Iraq. Uh, it's supposed to be a dig near Nineveh or Babylon or something where the old priest, um, Father Lancaster Marin, he, uh, he's on a dig, digging up, you know, things are from that Mesopotamia civilization thousands, thousands of years ago. And he enters, uh, someone, someone digs it up and calls it, calls his attention to it. It's a little, a little bust of the, the demon Pazuzu, which was an actual demon back then, um, worshipped, you know, the Babylonians or whatever. The woman in black. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gothic. That's gothic horror, which I think works pretty well. So gothic horror was a genre that uh, I believe started during uh, the Victorian era in England um, back in the, I want to say like 1870s, 1880s like when the novel Frankenstein was written, Edgar Allan Poe, that would also qualify as gothic type of horror. Salute to the 50-50 team. I don't know what that is. Was that a movie? Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what other movies really, really scared me. And, and there weren't many. The ones that did uh, were probably knock off The Exorcist. And, you know, no other movie, is, as far as I'm concerned, has done it as well as The Exorcist did. And... Um, you know, one thing that these modern movies where they miss the mark is they rely very, very heavily on CGI and things like jump scares where they don't they don't get into the real story and the acting and things like that. Things that really scare you, like what what concept would scare you like? Uh, some recent movies I thought were done very well were uh, Sinister with Ethan Hawke, where he moves into a, a home that had been a murder. The site of a, a family had been murdered and one of the, the children of the family went missing and then he, he finds all these uh, eight millimeter canisters uh, in his attic with a projector and he watches these movies and they're all, they're all filmed by uh, the murderer, which in the, in the cases, I'm not gonna, it's not a spoiler alert. Is that a film? Uh, Gregory Peck, he was in The Omen. Is that what you're talking about, Mark? The Woman in Black, what Peck was, it? Gregory Peck was even alive when Women in Black came out? I never saw Women in Black. That was with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, right? Yeah, I never saw that one. Um, so slasher movies, I love slasher movies. S Snuff, uh, I never saw the movie called Snuff. I think that was actually a pretty low-budget, crappy movie. Or you mean Snuff movies in general, Mark? The, a really good movie that, that depicted Snuff movies in a really terrifying way was 8mm with Nicolas Cage. Uh, Omen, yeah, the Omen was was definitely creeped me out. Of course, I mean, just to think that the uh, the Antichrist could be an actual thing, an actual person, who's the son, the spawn of the devil, and they have all these these helpers uh, on Earth facilitating them. And you know, anytime somebody would get close to exposing Damien or threaten him in any way or his plans, they would die these horrible, gruesome deaths. Uh, you know, those deaths kind of I think the, the Final Destination movie stole a lot from that concept of those uh, elaborate accidental deaths. You know, this has to happen. Like a bird has to land on this wire and the, uh, the bird poop drops on this and then this hits that and that rolls down the street and knocks over that. And then eventually somebody gets their head cut off or they get crushed or, you know, spikes. Something. It's always something really gruesome. But uh, yeah, the Omen movies, I remember... Uh, Omen 1, definitely scary. I was a kid when that came out. Damien Omen 2, when he was a, you know, a young adolescent, that was kind of creepy, kind of creepy. But I think uh, Omen 3, The Final Conflict with Sam Neill, who you probably know better from uh, as a doctor, Dr. Allen from the Jurassic Park movies. So he played the adult Damien where he was, he was coming to power, going to become the most powerful person in the world. And he, was, he had like legions of followers around the world helping him that unbeknownst to the rest of the world. And he had, it was a real creepy thing where uh, he believed that the Christ child was going to be reborn again, just as he had been born to the, to the devil. 
he thought the the Christ child was going to be born again another as a baby so he had all his helpers run around and he had the the, the location sort of triangulated based on the satellite uh it was the three stars were coming together and anyway it doesn't matter he had all his helpers murder all the all the male babies that were born on this particular i think within a two day period or maybe it was just this one day and it was just creepy to creepy to think that that could happen um but zombie movies i love zombie movies i got my walking dead shirt on i love zombie tv shows um even the funny one z nation which is hilarious it's it's sort of horror comedy in one where you know the walking dead and the, the Walking Dead spin-offs, Fear, Fear the Walking Dead, and the newest one, they take themselves a lot more seriously, especially Walking, Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. There's never any humor in those shows. It's it's very grim. Usually people are very serious. It's, it's always some life or death situation or some existential crisis. Uh, you know, there's there's no joy in the Walking Dead shows. They're, they're great shows. I mean, I, I think they're so well written, so well acted, directed, the, the, the effects, everything is just top notch. But Z Nation, if you ever got a chance to watch that, it was a production of Sci-Fi Network. I think they had three seasons. I don't know if they're going to have another one, but I love that show. It's just, it's, uh, it's just a good blend of horror and comedy, slapstick comedy sometimes with really likable characters and crazy situations. What we got there? What's really good? Underrated horror movie from the '90s. You know what? Sinister. Yeah, I love Sinister. Um, you know what? I want to. I want to throw out some a couple horror movies that I don't think got a lot of credit, didn't get a lot of recognition. There was one from the '70s called The Sentinel. I believe it came out in '76, so a couple of years after The Exorcist. And um, The Sentinel. It's about a woman, a high fashion model. She's a beautiful woman. I mean, even watching it now, I'm like, wow, this woman is freaking hot. She moves into uh, this building, like a brownstone building. Um, I guess Queens or something, maybe. She's in New York, and this isn't like in, in the city. She's, there are scenes where she's looking out at the skyline, so she's outside the city. I want to say maybe Queens or Brooklyn or something, but a it was a nice area. And this building she moves into has, uh, in the basement, is a portal to hell. And so everyone that lives in that building, she thinks they're just regular eccentric people, but they're all... She's basically looking at ghosts or, I don't know, they're actually all damned souls. They're all murderers, serial killers, things like that that have been, they're dead. But in, in that building, they, they're they still alive somehow. And, it, you know, she has to fight for her soul. And I don't want to give away the ending, but The Sentinel, excellent, excellent movie. Uh, Suspiria. Uh, yeah, the I didn't see a lot of the Dario Argento movies, but uh, Suspiria I did see. Very creepy. He has a totally different style from, you know, American horror directors. And I, I haven't seen a lot of like the Korean horror, but that's a totally different style too. That, you know, we, we remade all those, the grudge, the ring, those are all, uh, those are all from Korea, I believe originally. Another underrated movie from, uh, early eighties, 1982. I just watched it. The entity with Barbara Hershey, um, where it's, it's one of the only ones that sort of blends, the whole demonic aspect with uh, like a sexual aspect. This this demon is attacking her repeatedly, but it's raping her. It's like an incubus, I guess you would say. But uh, so you know, leaves her, and then but then it happens in front of her kids, and then obviously the kids were witnesses, and you know, eventually paranormal investigators get involved and everything. But uh, it's based on a true story. The Ring and Sinister, yeah, Sinister really creeped me out because I could see. You know that that ca the character, uh, the Ethan Hawke character, he's a he's a writer who's had his his greatest success uh, was a was a novel that's long gone. And the money's all gone. The fame's all gone. He's still got these kids and bills to pay, and he's he's floundering. He's trying to come up with something, and he knows very early on that he's into some really a really bad situation in that house with this uh, you know the 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 spirit, the bugul entity is is coming around. And uh, starting to infiltrate his life, and I think he knows very early on he's doomed, but he can't he can't stop. He's he's in it, he can't get out. He's got to write that book or try or die trying. And you've probably seen it. he dies trying. Uh, what else we got? The Super Val Kilmer. No, I never saw that. Um, another genre, another type of horror movie that always really creeped me out because it could happen is these ones that are based like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, Last House on the Left, a lot of movies are just based on psychotic human beings. There's nothing supernatural going on. 
There's no devils or demons or ghosts or witches. There's not no zombies. There's nothing like that. It's just crazy, evil people, which, you know, look in the news every every week or every couple of weeks, some, there's something in the news where, you know, someone's, someone's dig, they dug up 10 bodies in some guy's backyard or they found this guy had a torture dungeon in his basement or something, you know, that's real. We have, unfortunately, we do have human beings like that in, in this world capable of that type of cruelty and evil to other human beings. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that that could happen to any one of us if we're in the wrong place at the wrong wrong time abducted by someone like that and tortured or you know they could take skin off and make a mask out of it uh human centipede uh I, I thought that was a really creepy movie one and two i actually thought two was creepier than one i never saw three but human centipede one uh, was in germany where these these two women they break down and they go to this doctor's house and sews them together and he sews them you know mouth to anus to this uh, other person's Japanese one uh, man it was just it was terrifying because it's all it's all it could all really happen someone could actually do that to, to other human beings and the human centipede 2 was about a, a, a guy who was like a security guard at a at a parking garage and he was he's crazy he's demented and he's obsessed with that movie and uh, obsessed with trying to that whole situation himself he wants to recreate it with a lot more people and he does and it's it's so disgusting and so violent you feel so badly for the victims what else we got guys hammer horror vincent price yeah yeah hammer did a lot of great stuff um you know when i was a kid we had a uhf channel all the horror movies i saw as a kid were on when i say vhf and uhf i know a lot of younger people like what the f is he talking about so on the old tvs the uh single digit we had single digit channels like channel two, four, five. This is in Boston. We had two, four, five, and seven. Those were our VHF channels. So it was like ABC, NBC, CBS, and then UHF. They were independent channels. So we had a couple of independent ones, and they would play. That's where I saw all the horror movies. Was on that uh, Eraserhead. I wouldn't call that horror, but it, was, it sure was creepy. There's a lot of movies that that I wouldn't classify them as horror per se, but they were definitely creepy. Uh, Eraserhead, a David Lynch movie. I would even say, uh, you know, Twin Peaks, that definitely had a really creepy, uncomfortable feel to it much of the time. And a lot of like the sequences where they were in, they were in that lodge speaking backwards and just bizarre images and things. Pie, eh, I haven't seen that, but yeah. It's, it's hard to define horror. And sometimes I get upset if I'm looking at like on demand, my on demand on my, uh, and I, I search for horror movies and all these movies come up that to me, I'm like, that's not horror. What do you, how dare you? But, uh, you know, horror is in the eye of the beholder. And what's scary to me might not be scary to you and vice versa. You know, all, all movies, they, they resonate with us for different reasons. Uh, another another genre that's that popped up, didn't pop up until the 2000s was torture porn. Uh, the, the, two, the two famous movies that really spawned that were Hostel, obviously. Eli Roth's Hostel, which had two sequels. I don't know if you guys realize there were actually three of those movies. And the Saw movies. I think there's been seven of those. Saw one, I want to say there was Saw one through six or seven, and then they did one called Jigsaw. So there's seven or eight Saw movies. And uh, again, those are those are perfectly uh, plausible, especially hostile. You know, is it so far out of the realm of possibility to think that there could be uh, some place where for a lot of money, you could pay to torture another human being to death? I, I don't doubt that that's happened in real life at some point with, you know, Billions of people in it and a lot of rich people. Certainly some of them have to be twisted and evil. Uh, I thought they were terrible. Uh, the scary movie. What was that? The scary movie. Scary scary movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the one with the ghost face killer. Those are like real cute hip twists on the slasher genre. Uh, so the slasher genre, like I, I was there from the very beginning with slasher movies because I was obsessed with those at that age. I told you, I used to get the magazine Fangora. I used to go see every Friday the 13th movie, every Halloween movie. And, you know, in the 80s, there were probably two or 300 just crap, most of them were crappy slasher movies. You know, uh, the thing about horror movies is, yeah, horror and comedy, to me, they don't mix. If you mix horror and comedy, it's a comedy. It's not, it's not scary anymore because you broke up 
like you couldn't imagine like the exorcist or sinister with some moments of levity in it wouldn't work you want to keep that grim foreboding sense where you're just like ah oh, you just feel like something bad is going to happen it's inevitable and things are going to get worse and worse and they do they they uh they escalate um where was i going with the slasher movies so slasher movies to me they were very entertaining um you know i i I really used to get upset that like Jason was so impossible to kill. Michael Myers was so impossible because there's supposedly nothing supernatural going on. These are just Michael Myers is just supposed to be a person. I think he was supposed to be, if you read the books, which I actually did read, I used to go out and buy the uh, paperback adaptations of, of movies, which were, they were horrible. They were crap, but I mean, I was such a fan. I went and bought them. So, Hey, happy Halloween, Roger. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors, yeah. I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. They were a farce. They were, like, ridiculous. But they had some creepy moments, I'd say, especially the first one. The first Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Freddy wasn't throwing out as many one-liners. He wasn't trying to be make jokes or anything. He was just, he was hunting these kids down and playing with them and murdering them in the most horrific ways. You know, poor Johnny Depp got, got sucked into his bed and came out as a fountain of blood. Uh, I remember that scene where you, uh, the lead character, Heather Langenkamp, I can't remember what the character's name was, but she saw her friend who had been murdered uh, in a plastic bag being dragged down by some invisible force down the hallway, which was Freddy. And I think she spoke to her. Or something. It was just really creepy, you know. The thing about horror movies, if they really work, they stick with you. There's at least one, one or more images or a scene that you just can't get out of your head. Um... Man, so going back to like The Exorcist, there's certain scenes I'll never get out of my head. Um, they were just so, so horrific. Uh, like I remember when the mother busts in uh, and the daughter's rig and sitting there with the crucifix, just jamming it into her vagina. It's all bloody and she's like, Jesus, F you. And then the mother tries to come over to stop it. Backhands her, goes flying across the room. That movie just, it was just, wow. I mean, it's, it's, we've had, so that was 1974. We've had 46 years to come up with something scarier than that. And we, we still haven't, I, I haven't seen anything scarier than that. And I've seen a lot of horror movies. Hey, Ron, a chance to watch Dr. Sleep? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Sleep was pretty good. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge, huge Stephen King fan. We share the same birthday. I've read pretty much everything he's ever written. Um. And I've seen almost every adaptation. And it's, some of them are a lot better than others. It, it's, it's hard to really get the spirit of a book across perfectly on film. Because when you're reading a book, you know, you're really, in your mind, you're seeing things. And you, your, your imagination can make things more horrible than any movie director or, or special effects people or CGI people could ever come up with, you know, our imagination comes up with, just think about your nightmares. Think about some of, if you guys remember your dreams and your nightmares, think about some of the worst nightmares you ever had. And I bet you still get creeped out thinking, but just, you could imagine the feelings you were feeling in that nightmare or the images you were seeing or what was happening. And it was, it was so, such a horrible feeling to be in the midst of that situation. And thank God it was only a dream and you wake up and you're so relieved. Uh, no, I haven't seen the lighthouse. I'm not into thrillers. I Like I said, I get upset when thrillers are sort of marketed as horror movies. Uh, the Witch. The Witch was very well done. Very well done. So that took place... It was basically supposed to be Salem. I, I don't think they ever identified what the name of the village was. It was supposed to be around that time, the late 1600s, in somewhere in New England. Uh, to me, it was just Salem. Uh, I just keep calling it that. Or, or maybe like uh, Plymouth. And, uh, yeah, so these people, their family is, is kicked out from the settlement because their religious beliefs, I think he's like, he's too religious or he's too like right wing with his religious beliefs or anyway, he gets, he gets, uh, banished from the, the settlement and he has to go live in the woods with his, his, uh, wife and three kids. And, you know, there's a witch out there as the title should, uh, let you know, and, the witch starts messing with them and the baby gets stolen and it just gets, it gets worse and worse. The, the thing about horror movies that, that, uh, the, the good ones is, is they, things escalate, something bad happens, something worse happens. And it just, it's like a snowball effect. And, and, you know, there's no hope. I, I do, I do like horror movies that, uh, child's play. 
Child's Play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's creepy to think that a doll could be alive, but I mean, Annabelle doll is pretty scary. Jesus, uh, the Trilogy of Terror used to be on Videodrome. Yeah, David David Cronenberg. Very creepy, body horror. If you guys are watching, Eli, Eli Roth has a show on AMC every Saturday night now. They're in the second season called History of Horror. Really, really good if you're a horror fan. They go into different types of horror movies or whatever and, and, and a lot of good clips and discussions with actors and directors and stuff. But uh, uh, where was I going? I wasn't talking about Child's Play. Oh, every Halloween when I was growing up on Channel 38, which was a UHF station, they used to play this anthology movie called Trilogy of Terror. It was three stories. And I couldn't tell you what the other two were, but I only remember there was one about this woman, Karen Black, who I think someone sent her, it was someone that didn't, someone she had wronged somehow, sent her in the mail uh, a voodoo, it wasn't a voodoo doll, it was like a, it was an, it was a, I think it was an African warrior doll. You know, it was about a foot high, terrifying little thing uh, with a spear and uh, these sharp ass teeth. Of course the thing comes to life and it, she spends, you know, 15, 20 minutes out of this uh, short film battling this thing as it's trying to murder her. And at the end, it, it the spirit of the, uh, she, she puts it in the oven. She puts it in the oven and finally kills it. It's, you're watching it burn while it's like flailing around and screaming. And then, um, but the spirit of the thing comes out and goes into her and then it shows her like at the end with a butcher knife on the ground squatting, just clacking it on the ground. And she smiles and her teeth are just like the thing's teeth. Really, really creepy. Do I believe in ghosts? Yes, I do, absolutely. Um, I think I will end this with my own best ghost story because we could talk about horror movies all damn day. So, okay, you guys listening? It was 2013 or 2014, I want to say. Whatever year Dennis Wolf won the Arnold Classic, it was that year. I think it was 2014. Um, that was the year there was a huge snowstorm on... The Saturday night, I think, that we were there. So Sunday, nobody could get out of Columbus, Ohio. Flights were canceled, you know, airports. I think like the whole Midwest and Northeast, there was snow everywhere. Uh, everybody was having trouble getting out. And um, I couldn't, my flight was canceled or post. I couldn't get out that day. So I had to get a hotel. And rather than stay, keep my, keep where I was, I was at the, the Hilton in downtown Columbus. I found a motel out by the airport. I figure, well, if I'm going to be going back and forth to the airport, uh, I might as well get a place near there. Cause I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just here until I can get the hell out of here. Anyway, I was in room 212. I remember that because that's the name of the division. So this is a basic, basic motel. Nothing special. Wasn't new. Wasn't, didn't seem to be that old. But anyway, sometime around 2 or 3 in the morning, um, I was sleeping on my stomach, which... I used to do all the time. It's most, it was most comfortable for me. So around two or three in the morning, I wake up and someone's on top of me. And my first thought was, shit, I'm getting robbed. They're going to rob me. Maybe they're going to kill me. I'm, they, someone broke into my room and someone's on, they're trying to subdue me. They're on top of me and I'm screwed because I'm, I'm like this, you know, I can't really fight back. And they were heavy. They were heavy and I'm trying to move and I can't move. And then it, it dawned on me that this isn't, there's no person here. This is something else. It's not a human being, but it's real. I'm awake. I can see the room. I can, I, I was completely sober. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking pot, nothing. I was totally sober and I woke up out of a dead sleep and this was happening. And all I could think to do was pray. Cause you know, I've always believed that all these evil things, they're, they have an aversion to uh, to God, to Christ, and that's really the only thing that'll drive them away or keep them at bay or subdue them. So I started praying. I was doing the Lord's Prayer, did the the St. Michael the Archangel Prayer, whatever that one's called, and I felt it come off. I felt the weight come off me. So I jump up, put all the lights on. I'm looking everywhere. There's nobody in the room, of course. <sighs> Got to go to sleep eventually. So... Eventually, I was able to fall back asleep. It was probably an hour later, two hours later. And I'm sleeping on my side. I don't want the same thing to happen again, just in case. Sure enough, I wake up at like four, five. It was still dark out. 
again, the weight, the pressure is on me. It's pushing down on me. And uh, oh, I'm like, man, again, same thing. Prayed, <laughs> I prayed in my head, not out loud. And it came up. So then I'm up. I'm, I said, I'm not going back to sleep. I'm definitely not going to be in this room anymore. So I uh, got up, went to the, the fitness center, did some cardio or something, got some coffee. You know, by the time I go back to my room, it's, it's light out. Um, I checked out of the hotel. I said, I'm out of here. And I was at the airport waiting for flights uh, all day. I think I finally got out on a bus. I was in that airport probably from like 8 in the morning till 6 p.m., 7 p.m. I finally got on a flight. It was like more like 8. Anyway, that's my true ghost story. Let's see what else. Uh, what else, you guys? Truly believe. Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, those are decent. You did that podcast, Lee Priest. Yeah, whenever they want me back. I, that was Jason Genova. No. <laughs> I think Jason's uh, 15 minutes are up, guys. I don't think he's relevant anymore. I'm sorry. He had a great run. Great run, Jason. I mean, made some good money on YouTube, got sponsorships, became a household name in, in our little world. Uh, shadows can spook me. Not sleep on our tanks. Yeah, so anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to watch some horror movies tonight. I don't think we're going to get any trick-or-treaters. It's not even dark yet. Uh it's a strange, strange Halloween. COVID ruined it for us. We don't have Halloween parties. We don't have haunted attractions. Uh, I don't know where Victor Richards is. If, I, if, if somebody could message me on Ron Harris Muscle on my Instagram and let me know where he is, how to reach him. I haven't heard a thing about Victor Richards in years, like decades, years. That's how long it's been. Uh, but I did, I did know him a little bit, Victor, because he went to my gym in Pasadena, California for about six months. I talked to him a few times. I wouldn't say I was his buddy or anything, but you know, I spotted him many times. He actually would demand that people spot him. Uh, UK lockdown, sorry about that guys. Yeah, COVID's scarier than any of this man, really. But uh, anyway guys, that was it. Uh, good talking about scary movies. Next time it'll be back to Biceps and Big Rami and Olympia and all that good stuff that muscular development's really all about. Gold's Gym Pasadena, yes. It was a world gym. It was it was a Gold's by then. Yeah, it was a world gym when I first started going there in 92. And by the time I left in 2000, it had been a Gold's for a year or two. Oh, yeah, Luca, that was a great gym. I love that gym. I love that gym. Had this out that outdoor workout area with all the hammer machines and the dumbbells and cable set up. That was a great gym. And the mountains right there. Was, I love that gym. I was there for eight years. I was a trainer there for... Almost two years. I was I was in that place a lot. I was sitting there sometimes from 4.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night. You know, maybe I'd go home and take a break, but I was in that gym a lot. Anyway, I don't want to keep talking about that. So that was it. That was our little discussion about scary movies. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy Halloween. Watch some scary movies. Eat some candy. Have a drink or a smoke, whatever, whatever uh, is your particular fancy. And that's it, man. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.